don't know all of what I'm going to say. Hi, Stacy, Wadley, Constance, Rosie. Hi, Yvonne. Good morning, Loretta. Praise the Lord. That's how me and my aunt, <laughs> when we talk on the phone or when we text each other, we say, praise the Lord, saints. <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, that's how we um, talk to each other. But um, I was a little bit nervous to do this live because it hits home pretty hard for me. Um, if you follow me, then you know that I, you know my story with my mom and the drug abuse and um, just uh, some of the things that I've shared concerning my upbringing because of her choices. But um, I believe the Lord is going to wants to share something this morning. So I'm just going to share what I've written down. I have a lot of things, a lot of notes that I wrote down. So I'm just going to go and let the Lord say what he wants to say. If I cry, forgive me. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so, uh, I was really touched on, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, I just love Leandria Johnson. I don't know. Some of you may know who she is, but she is, um, a gospel singer. I guess you want to call her that she's a singer. And, um, I, uh, I remember just hearing about her. I didn't watch the Sunday's best thing that she was on, but I, anyway, fast forward, I was listening to her testimony, um, and she, you know, most of you all know she's in rehab if you follow her and, uh, she's in rehab for substance abuse. And, um, what she was sharing in her testimony is how, you know, she was, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. She had a problem with drinking alcohol and that hit home for me because I, I, I just was listening to her say how when she would drink, she was in denial. See, we can't, we don't know we have a problem until we confess that we have a problem until we can actually see it everybody around us can see that we jacked up <laughs> okay and they can even tell us but until we actually see it for ourselves, then it's not a problem <laughs> well it is a problem but it's not a problem that we can do anything about so um it hit home for me because i was in that same place there was I was at a time in my life you all where I had got I was drinking alcohol so much so much on a regular that I didn't even realize how much I was drinking I did not realize that it was actually a problem I didn't even see how it was affecting my children I did not see how it was affecting my marriage at the time I did not see how it had affected everything it wasn't until after the fact um, so what I want to share is um, I want to start off with just sharing some reasons as to what led to my drinking. You know, what made me turn to alcohol? Well, there were many things. Uh, what I come to find out is that I was full of pain. And that's why I always encourage others to pray for those around you who are substance abusers. They're not doing this for fun. OK, they may say that. And they may look like it, um, but deep down, there is some deep-rooted pain going on. And that's why we have to pray for them. Um, when I was in the world and when I was drinking and carrying on, I was not... I may have looked like I was having fun when I was at the club and I'm just getting drunk off my behind and, you know, and doing all the foolish things I was doing. But I was hurting. See, what the people in the club didn't know and what my family members didn't know and what my friends didn't know was that I was hurting. See, when I was a little girl, I was molested. Didn't tell nobody. Then I've been raped multiple times. Didn't really tell nobody. But see, that's what our people around us don't know. They don't know. I've been abused. Yeah, I was beat down one time real good, you know, and then people don't believe you or they downplay your story. Um, I was rejected a lot in my life. That's that thing followed me y'all so long. I, I have been rejected. I have like it's, it's something I don't know what it is. 
I've had this rejection thing follow, following me all my life. And I know that the enemy wanted to use that to destroy me because no one likes to feel rejected. And see, my thing started with my mom. See, that was my first uh, experience into the world. I'm just getting here. I'm just getting into this world. I don't know nothing. And the very first person, the only person that I'm that should be accepting me rejected me. So it started there. It started there and it continued and it continued. And I was rejected by more people. And it, and it was just. So moving right along, I was abandoned. I mean, these are things people don't know. These are things people don't know. when we just making judgments. We're looking at people, even on social media, and you're trying to figure out why they saying that kind of stuff. Why are they dressed like that? Why are they on social media high, drunk? It's a reason. But we have to have the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding so we can pray for them. <laughs> it, we're not doing this for fun. People don't do this for fun. I was mistreated. I was misused. I was bullied. And that's just to name a few. I went through so many things from the time I was born to the time that I became a young adult that I was jacked up. And I have explained this, you know, before I was so jacked up. So once I discovered what alcohol would do, I mean, those that have drank before or drink, we know. Alcohol will take you to another level. It takes your mind off of whatever it is you're trying to escape. It's a it's a it's a way to escape. I didn't want to feel pain. I didn't want to feel pain. So when I would get up in the morning, I would go pour me a shot of vodka. Okay, because I needed something to get me going. I needed something to just help me to, to just even start my day. I didn't start my day with prayer. I started my day with a shot of vodka. Or two, because that's how bad I was hurting. And I didn't know, I didn't know that I had a father that I could go to at this time. I mean, I knew he was there, but I didn't know about the relationship. I went throughout the day, y'all, getting high, drinking. I got kids to take care of. Hmm. So when I was married to my last husband, my ex-husband, I always say this. I Y'all never hear me say nothing bad about nobody that I've been with because it ain't their fault. You know, I was messed up. Um, but I decided to get into my car and um, I took my kids to the park and I decided to drink some wine while they were on the playground playing. And while, you know, we got in the car, I had to go pick up my husband. He, it was time for him to get off work. Well, I got pulled over and I got pulled over. For something. I don't even remember what it was, but it wasn't for the reason why, you know, it wasn't for me swerving or nothing. I think they said I was following too close to a car. It was something I never heard before. And it just so happened there was a half empty wine bottle on the floor and he was like, get out the car. So y'all know what happened, don't you? I went to, I ain't even make it to, I, don't, I didn't go to jail, but some kind of way I got uh, issued to go to uh, or, or ordered to go to a uh, treatment facility. Woo. When y'all hear what happened, y'all going to be like, oh, my God. Now, this is how God worked. Now, I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. True, true that. But I went to this treatment. And I've talked about this before, but I never shared the testimony of what happened. So I go to this treatment facility. And when if you've ever been to treatment, um, they'll, you know, monitor your when you first come in. They just want to make sure you're not going through. Um, they want to make sure you're stable. So they'll do your blood pressure. Um, they'll check your vital signs. So when I when I got in there, they started checking my vital signs. And for some reason, well, I know why, but my blood pressure was through the roof, but I was feeling fine. And so, OK, so I remember I went. They ended up rushing me to the hospital. They checked my blood pressure three times, you know, throughout the time I was there, like within the same day. But my blood pressure, y'all, was so high, it scared them. I'm not a medical professional. All I know is I was feeling fine. So they rushed me to the ER. I get to the ER. They're like, can we do this CAT scan? Normally, I say no. I'm telling you, at this point in my life, normally when I would go to the ER and they would ask me to do a, a CAT scan, normally I would say no. I would waive my right for the CAT scan. 
But for some reason, it got to be God, y'all. For some reason, this one time I said, sure, I'll do it. I don't even remember it coming out my mouth. It just came out before I could say anything because I had the right to deny the CAT scan. Y'all, they did the CAT scan and they sent me back to the facility, the uh, treatment place. So they called back within a couple of hours and said, you got to come back right now. Come to find out, y'all, I had pneumonia and I had a blood clot in my lung. I had pneumonia and I had a blood clot in my lung and it was close to my heart. Woo! <laughs> and what y'all don't understand is if I hadn't got pulled over for my foolishness, I would have went to pick up my husband at the time, I would have went home and I would have died at home. At some point within a day or two, I would have died. I would not be here. Oh my God. When this, when I first, it took me a long time to accept that. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. I was like, God, I would not be here. Because there, I felt fine. There were no signs. I had no symptoms, no signs, nothing. 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 And if I wouldn't have got pulled over and sent to this treatment place, I wouldn't even known I had pneumonia and a blood clot in my lung. Woo! Y'all, now y'all, y'all gonna understand why I'm so crazy about God. Y'all gonna understand. See, he didn't have to do that for me. I was in my mess. I was in my foolishness. I was in my foolishness. And guess what? I still didn't stop drinking. You know why? Because I still was not healed. So I continued. Moving right along. Um, I'm just trying to see some of the notes I have. I wrote a note here. We will stop abusing substances and people when we allow God to heal us. See, my mom, I forgave my mom. And I know part of the reason that I turned to alcohol, like I told you all, is the rejection I experienced from her. And you just had to have gone through what I went through to understand how I felt and how it feels to be rejected by your own mother. I can't explain that. And no, it wasn't God's fault. And I don't even blame my mom for rejecting me. And I know that may sound crazy because naturally as humans in our flesh, we want to blame somebody for hurting us. We want somebody to pay. We want somebody to pay. And for a long time, I, I hated my mom. I hated her. Because I didn't understand. I didn't understand what I did to have to go through what I went through. Because you chose drugs, I had to move from house to house. Because you chose drugs, I ended up in situations and, and in things that I shouldn't have been in. Because you chose drugs, I had to feel unloved and unwanted and got my clothes in trash bags. Because you chose drugs, now I'm feeling unworthy. Now I'm feeling like I ain't about nothing. Like you don't even want me. I had a long way to go, y'all. <laughs> a sister was jacked up. A sister was jacked up. I did so many things, just choosing the wrong guys. And then it doesn't make any it doesn't make it any better, you all, when you have to deal with people. And that's why you have to get delivered from the opinions of other people. Because just people alone, their opinions and the things they say to you will make you go and, and kill yourself. That's why people people that aren't strong enough. And who don't have faith in God, they'll go hang themselves and kill themselves just based off what somebody's saying. And all it is is spoken in ignorance because you don't even know what I've been through. You don't even know what I've been through. That's why I'm not so quick to say things about people. When Leandria Johnson was on the thing some a couple years ago and she was drinking and she was acting crazy, I even posted, I can go find a post. I said, be careful. Don't put your mouth on that woman because whatever. God is not finished with her yet. That woman is anointed of God and he is going to bring her through. See, only God can, only he can do it in his timing. But that's another story. <sighs> I went through so much, y'all. Just laying up with guy after guy. Just doing things because I was so hurt. 
I was so hurt. And that's why I tell my daughters today. That's why I'm the way that I am. You don't have to go through what I went through. But if you have went through things in your childhood, if you have gone through things, it is so critical that you allow God to come in and heal those places. Because if he doesn't, you're going to make a lot of decisions. You're going to make a lot of bad choices and he'll come in and help you. He'll fix it for you, you know, and he'll give you grace to go through things, but you don't have to go through it. I wouldn't have been through two marriages if I would have been healed. Do somebody hear me up in here? Do somebody hear me? I wouldn't have had the abortions I had if I was healed. Do somebody hear me? We have to also be aware that people who are family members or friends of people who have substance abuse, they, they are hurting too. Everybody's hurt. Whenever somebody is using drugs or alcohol, it affects everybody. It's not just the person who's going through. They may be doing things that hurt you. They lying to you. They stealing from you. But let me tell you something. They not in their right mind. So don't don't charge it to their heart. You know, don't charge it. You know, just you can't do it like that because they're not in their right mind. God began to help me to understand that my mother, it's not that she doesn't love me. It's not that she didn't want to be there for me, but she didn't know how. Even to this day, I'm 36 years old and my mother still doesn't have her life together, but I will never disrespect her. I never have and I never will. I still love her. I don't know her like that, but I still love her. I still love her. She's the only mother I'll ever have. And if I never get to know her, I'm going to tell you something. Even though I had that void with her in my life, y'all, the Lord is the only one that could fill that void. I tried to fill that void with alcohol. I tried to fill that void with marijuana. I tried to fill that void with different men. I tried to fill that void with all types of things, going out, doing this, and nothing could fill that void but the Lord. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. He is the only one. That's why the Bible say he will be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. Mm, mm, mm. We have to let God come in and heal us, y'all. That's the answer. It's not, and we have to, we have to get this. There are so many people that are hurting. And see, I see it for what it is because I've been there. I have been there, honey. <laughs> I know what it's like to be hurting so bad. You know, and the only thing you know to do is to grab the bottle, grab the joint. Let me just get high. Let me. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, people have, you know, there's something going on when you got to, when you got to try to escape your life. If your life is that, if your life was good, you wouldn't want to escape it. If your life was good, if everything was all good, you wouldn't want to try to leave your reality. That's what substances do. It take you to another place. Woo! I know all about it. <laughs> In college, I tried everything, honey. I know all about it. And it was great. I was willing to try everything because I was trying to escape the pain. Do you know how hard? Do you know what it feels like to go get an abortion? Do you? Do you? Oh, my God. It, it feels like it rips a part of your soul. Women, every woman is not the same. Every woman that walks in an abortion clinic is not a murderer. We're not trying. We're not just, I don't want to raise my kid. It's not like that. You can't, you can't do that. And don't worry about who got something to say about you. God, the only one that could judge you, honey. You don't know it is so painful for a woman to make a decision to go and have her baby aborted. Now, I'm not saying it's right because it's not, but I can't change the past either, can I? Nor do I have a heaven or hell to put somebody in. But I know the hell that I went through. I know what I went through. I know the depression I went through. I know the issues that happened as a result of that abortion, those abortions. I know what I went through. And I know who healed me from it. Jesus did. 
It wasn't a person. It wasn't a drink. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a place. It was the Lord. He let me know, I forgive you. I forgive you. I do. And that's why I said you can't listen to people, baby. You got to know. You got to know who your Savior is. You have to know that he died for you. He didn't come here for the people who don't ever do nothing, y'all. He didn't come for the person who think they are perfect and righteous. He didn't come for that. He didn't come for that. That's the whole thing. He came for the lost. He came for the people that's jacked up. But people don't want you to be jacked up or they want you to have a certain jacked upness. They want to judge you. They want you. They want to give you. They want to approve your jacked upness. But guess what? Don't can't nobody can't nobody do nothing to you. The worst a person can do to you is kill your body. That's it. But guess what? You still alive because your spirit and your soul lives on. That's the worst they can do. That's why people kill people. That's because they so angry. There ain't nothing else they can do. They can't do nothing else to you, honey. They can't do nothing else to you. They really can't. That's the worst they can do is kill your body. That's it. They just killing your flesh. <clears throat> I asked God to help me with this because, you know, I love my mom. And I know her choices have hurt a lot of my family. Um, but I just want to encourage you, if you do have a family member or a loved one or a friend that, you know, does abuse alcohol or drugs, y'all just pray for them because prayer does work. The only thing that's going to help, the only thing we really should be doing is praying for them and showing them love, showing them the love of God, because some family is and friends are never going to come out of their drug use. They're just never going to come out. Some people, you know, get delivered and some don't. But us walking around with our hurt, our bitterness, our hatred, our anger, it's not going to fix nothing. It's just not fixing anything. The person's still doing what they're doing. And you can say they don't even care. No, they can't care. They're not in a place to care. And once you get it, once you get that, it'll help you to not be so hurt. It'll help you to be more understanding. And yeah, you may have to distance yourself. Then do that. Do what's best for you. But don't, you know, don't, you really can't take it too personal because, and that's why when people get clean and stuff, they don't even remember the stuff they didn't did, y'all. They don't remember them lies they told you. You still talking about something that happened 10 years ago. They talking about what? I stole your car and sold it for $10. What you talking about? They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to help you. They don't know and they ain't going to remember. They don't know and they ain't going to remember. But what you can do is you can pray that God heals them. You can pray that God delivers them because there's something deep rooted in them that happened. I don't know what happened to my mother, but something happened to her along the way in her life. Something happened to her. There is something in her. Something happened. That's what it is. And then she turned to drugs as her way of escape from her pain. And then she just couldn't get out of it. Maybe she'll come out of it one day. But God has to heal that pain. We're going to keep we going to keep doing what we're doing until the pain. And it ain't just drugs and alcohol, whatever you're doing. That is just crazy. You know, we got to let God heal us, y'all. We got to let him heal us. So hopefully I gave you something to think about and just just know that usually the people who around us who are doing that stuff, y'all, they want to be free. They want to be free. They just don't know how to get free. So imagine being in their shoes. Imagine being in this prison. You just can't stop. You got to keep going back. They're hurting, too. It's not just you. They're hurting, too. When I was drinking every day and I had to look at my kids in the face, I knew they were disappointed in me. I knew they were disappointed in me and I could not stop. I knew they was looking at me like, why can't my mama stop drinking? And that's why I praise God today. I am so 
grateful like I put in that post yesterday that my children get to see everything going on with me that they saw me at my lowest I am glad that they saw me at my lowest I'm glad they saw me going through I'm glad because now they see it was nothing but Jesus it was nothing but him so if they get older and they stray the path honey it's not because they don't know they have seen the work of God in my life. They have seen it firsthand. They have seen things that nobody else has seen. They have seen me cry out for help from God. They have seen me when I was broke, busted, and disgusted. They have seen me. And they have seen what God has done. And I tell them every day, baby, you better get a relationship with Jesus. I may die tomorrow. You better know who the Lord is. Or you'll be turning to drugs and alcohol. It's the truth. As soon as our parents die. Oh, let me just go drink my problems away. That's not the answer. And that's why they still waiting on you when you get sober. They like here. I'm right here. They knocking at you. Knocking at your door. I'm right here. I ain't went nowhere. I'm still here, boo. The pain is still there waiting on you to get sober. And sometimes the alcohol make it worse. You start drinking and you start feeling worse. Ah! Now you crying and calling everybody and making posts that we don't want to read. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. I'm just saying. But we got to love people for real. Like, we got to do it in love. God's love. Not our own definition of love. God's love. And I am a witness, y'all, that God will heal you and deliver you. I drank alcohol for many years. I know 10, 12 years of my life. Because I was, no, it was longer than that, 15 years of my life. Because I didn't know how to deal with the pain. So, a couple of years ago, when I let God come in and heal me, that's when all of that stuff just disappeared. I didn't have a desire for it anymore because I didn't need it. I didn't need to escape. I don't want to escape my life. I love my life. <laughs> I don't want to go nowhere else. I don't need to get high. I am great right here. Like, I'm better here and I have smoked weed before. I know what it's like to get high and I don't want to do it. I am, I am better here. I am better here. I know what it's like to do both. I know what I feel like if I go have a drink. I don't want that. I'm great here. I'm better here. I'm better here. Does that make sense? Like I don't want nothing. I went from wanting every day I had to have. Like I had to have. It wasn't no, it wasn't no nothing. They knew me at the store, boo. I had to have it. But once the Lord did what he did in me and he healed me and set me free, he who the son says free is free indeed. That ain't no, this ain't no game. The word is real. He who the son says free is free indeed. I can't make this up. I, can, I just can't. I can't. I can't fake this. You cannot fake deliverance. You cannot fake it. You cannot fake it. I promise you, you can't. I can't fake freedom. I can't fake it. I truly am free and healed. Like <laughs> after everything I've been through, after everything I've been through, y'all. And I this ain't. I ain't even told y'all half of it. I have been through a lot, a lot, and it was nothing but the Lord. I just wish I would have let him or knew how to allow him to heal me sooner, but that's okay because he got me the rest of the way, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I ain't got no reason to go back and I don't have a reason to turn back. There's just no reason. God is good, y'all. Anything you need, he has it. And if you have an issue with substance abuse, I'm telling you, if you let God really, if it's hard, y'all. It's hard to just let God deal with your issues because you got to face them. I didn't just get healed. I had to go back and revisit some things. I had to face my pain head on. And that wasn't easy. It was not easy. It was not easy. I had to confess some things. I had to revisit some things. I, it was hard. I had to go back to my childhood and go through some things again so I can get healed and free. So I'm not going to say it was easy, but it was sure worth it. 
it was worth it. If I had to do it all over again, I would. If I could, because I know I'm gonna be free. It's nothing like being free. It's nothing like being free. It ain't nothing like it. I don't care what nobody say. It ain't nothing like being free. And for those that have to pick up a drink every day, can you imagine your life not having to pick up a drink? Do you know what that's like? <laughs> ain't nothing like being free. It's nothing like it. But that's what God came. That's why Jesus came. That's why he came. So you can have life and have it more abundantly. So you could be free from all of this, the stuff that you didn't been through. You can forgive your daddy for what he did to you. You can forgive your mama for what she did to you. You can forgive that person. You can forgive, honey. So you could be free. Us walking around, jacked up, angry. Just angry. You ever meet people that just, ah, ah. they don't want to speak. They got an attitude. Something happened to them. If you really see people for how it really is, it'll help you deal with people differently. People are not just angry for nothing. Y'all, something happened. Something's going on on the inside. <laughs> they may be, ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. It, it could be a num number of things. The main thing is once you know, you can deal with it differently and you can let it be water off your back. So when people do stuff or they in a certain mood or attitude, you know, you could just be like, ain't no point of you cussing them out. For what? Now you got to go ask for forgiveness. No, just pray for them. Just pray for them. Pray for them, y'all. And ask God to help you forgive. Ask God to come in and heal you and show you and show you. He'll do it, y'all. I'm trying to tell you what I know. I can only tell you what I know, what I've been through, what I've experienced and what I know to be real and true. I am amazed at what God has done and I'm forever grateful, forever grateful, honey. I know how I used to be. I know how I used to be. And don't nobody know that but me and God. I know how I used to be and I know what he has done for me. And so that's why I ain't trying to hear nothing of what some people talking about, talking about Jesus. No, honey, I know Jesus Christ is real. He died for me. He rose again. And the Holy Spirit lives within me as my evidence that he is my risen savior who lives forever. He is king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And can't nobody tell me no different because of what I have experienced. Now, you could say what you want to say, but if you've experienced it, then you know. Then you know the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. You keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. So... With that being said, y'all, I just thank God today, y'all. I truly do. I pray y'all have a great day. <sighs> I don't know what else to say. I really don't. <laughs> I'm just grateful, y'all. So, I'll see y'all soon. I have to run to the store. So, I just wanted to share on here. I didn't know what I was going to, all what I was going to share, but... Praise God. I hope that I said something to encourage someone. God bless you and I love you. <laughs>